Uh, today we have our guest speaker, Steve Adams, the Microsoft device guy. We'll be talking about Windows devices. And uh, following that, we'll have Dale Sayers talking about device management. I'll make this uh, introduction short and hand it right over to Steve since we have so much content to uh, cover here today. Uh, please try to uh, keep your keep your phone and, and everything muted as the session progresses. And uh, if you have any questions throughout the session, uh, please feel free to put that in the chat window. And we'll do our best to uh, interrupt or, or insert your questions as the, the presentation progresses. Uh, but with that, Steve, uh, we're looking forward to this session. Great. Thank you very much, Jack. Um, I am Steve Adams, the device guy, and I live in the Microsoft world. I live in the U.S. organization, and my, jo my job wholeheartedly is focused on making sure our partners, and that's every partner of every type in the U.S., um, has everything they need to be a successful devices my partner with Microsoft. So I want to start off and just take a few slides this morning, 10 including the intro, or this afternoon, sorry, depending on where you are. I guess everyone's afternoon. Um, take, take a few minutes, just 10 slides, and kind of give everyone a state of the state of where we are with the Windows and what we're looking for um, as we move into our next fiscal year, um, what our vision is for, for the devices space. So to really to start off by a story, I think it's important that everyone understands where devices and management fit into our overall uh, mobility strategy framework. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with this, but this is probably the single best picture we have of how we're looking at mobility and Microsoft's mobility strategy. Today, we're going to primarily be focused in that orange bar or orange band, and that's in the devices space and in the management space. But as we, as Microsoft looks at mobility, and mobility to me is any kind of mobile device, a laptop, a tablet, a slate, um, a phablet, a, win a phone. Um, this is sort of the overlying enterprise strategy we're looking at in this space. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in by looking at where we are today with Windows and where we're going. So as this slide shows, we're continuing to drive Windows uh, to a single, to, to a convergence. Um, so currently right now, uh, we're at Windows 8.1 update, uh, released uh, just a couple days ago, um, and or I guess a couple weeks now. Um, so hopefully everyone's running Windows 8.1 update um, on all of Windows devices. And then on the phone world, uh, many of you may have noticed where we now have Windows Phone 8.1 developer preview available. Um, I personally am running that on my Nokia 1020. And having a great experience with it so far. Um, but what, what the main message is, um, is that as we move forward, we're going to converge the both platforms, both the phone platform and the computing platform, into a single Windows. Um, we don't have times on this yet, um, but it is what everyone in the Windows organization is focusing on on how we think about Windows, um, Windows as we move into the future. To get into the devices, very broad set of offerings. So some of my favorite, for example, two-in-one convertibles include like the XPS uh, 12. That's what I'm actually presenting to you, the Dell. XPS 12, which is what I'm presenting on for you today. I'm also a huge fan of the Lenovo uh, Yoga family, including the business-oriented ThinkPad Yoga. Um, of course, dear and near to my heart, and the device I travel with most is that two-in-one detachable device, the, the Microsoft Sur the Surface and the entire Surface family. 
We also have the RT tablets, including Surface, Acer, Asus. We have eight-inch tablets um, running both RT and full Windows. Uh, my favorite of that right now is the Dell Vision Pro. We have tablets. The Nokia 1520 comes to mind as a large form factor phone, um, almost too big to hold up to your head. And then, of course, the Windows Phone family. When we're looking at enterprise space and we're looking at, at things like PC, laptop, desktop, refresh, or replacement, um, we truly think that this two-in-one uh, offering is where most people should be going. Um, we, we still see a huge space for the, R, the RT tablet, the 8-inch, the phablet, and the phone, um, specifically in custom line of business apps, vertical specific apps. And if you, you are a device guy or gal like myself, um, uh, uh, enthusiast or even hobbyist, you may have the enterprise. We're primarily focused on the that that left-hand side, that two-in-one convertible, as being really the ideal device to touch to users that haven't had touch in the past, um, and to really potentially become that desktop replacement. Um, so. One of the things we've been working on is figuring out what, what are the characteristics of customers who will be replacing their PC with Windows 8 tablets. And our, our, our Windows team and our OEM team have been out and done a lot of research. And we found four characteristics of partners or of customers that we're seeing really adopt uh, Windows 8 today. Um, the first one is, is that partner that's focusing on managing their desktop utilizing Microsoft's tools. Um, where System Center and, and or Intune involved in those customers seem readily ready, sorry, they do seem ready to adopt Windows 8. And we really think that's because uh, when they understand that Windows 8 is Windows 7 but better right, and XP better. Um, so it's very easy to, to, to manage and control and secure through joining the domain, and also fits into their management infrastructure. The next space that we're seeing uh, rapid adoption is those customers have invested, invested in our communication collaboration you know, we'll always say Windows devices are the best devices to run Windows or run Office on. Now, obviously, you most of you are probably aware we have released Office onto the other platforms. Um, but for Windows 8 tablets, for those folks that have invested in Link and SharePoint, our Windows 8 devices are absolutely the best way to access and utilize those resources. The next category of customers that we're, we're finding with quick adoption into the really into the touch app space are those partner or those customers that are developing in Visual Studio. So where they have that the Microsoft Dev Tools and .NET really developing on our stack and is is easy to, much easier to do. Um, so we are seeing some good adapt adoption there. And then lastly, where, where companies have already approved Windows Phone on their stand just um, and, and testing, this is a great place where we can broaden that mobility stack and bring not only in phone but the Windows 8 uh, mobile devices as well. So when we're talking about devices, the thing to keep in mind is, or Windows 8 especially is, um, we run into a lot of, a lot of misinformation specifically around uh, Windows 8 being uh, scary. Um, we don't know how to use it. It's for touch only. It's the best desktop experience. Dude, where's my start button? All of that good stuff. Well, now that we're at Windows 8.1 update, 
Um, for those of you that kept score, you know, the, the rule used to be until service pack one. Um, so if you think about it, we had Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and now Windows 8.1 update. Um, think of that as sort of like service pack two. The nice thing about our update strategy now is we are continuing to add features and, and innovation and things you all are asking for into that space. To answer that question about, hey, Windows 8 is new, it's different, it's scary, um, and now Windows 8.1 update specifically, um, I like to use this the, the story that's shown on this slide. And that most people um, that are used to XP or Windows 7, there's just five things you, they need to know to get up and running and, and enjoying Windows 8. Um, so I want to take a few minutes. Um, with Windows 8.1, we introduced the Start button back. Um, now, the Start button, if you tap it, um, today it takes you to the Start screen. I like to explain that as, be, as the Start screen as being your Start menu that you're used to in XP or 7 on steroids, right? It's really all the same stuff. It's my search, it's my programs, it's my, my most actively used apps. But we can tweak it and tune it. We can make the start screen our own and that start button has come back. Um, what some people miss is you can right click on that start button and access um, power user or, or admin commands. So things like quickly getting to system, event viewer, task manager, computer management, and the command prompt with admin is now, you know, literally two mouse clicks away. Um, so absolutely, when we're showing Windows 8 to customers, we want them to understand that the start button is there and we're continuing to add more and more functionality. With 8.1, um, we did also make shutting down easier or signing out easier. Uh, again, if you see on that right, and number one, on the right click of the start button, we have the second option from the bottom, shut down. Number two is we want to make sure everyone knows about the ability to pin apps um, on the taskbar. And it's not just to make it so PowerPoint and Word are easily available, but as you can see here, because I have PowerPoint, pin to my taskbar, um, I have a full list of all my recent items. So it's very easy just to right click on my PowerPoint icon and say, yeah, I'm working on the, the third deck down, which is the, the deck I'm giving today. Um, this is a great feature. With Windows 8.1 update now, we also have the ability to pin um, modern apps or those Windows 8 apps that, that live and have live tiles on the start screen. We have the ability to pin those on here now um, as well. So highly encourage you to, to try the, the taskbar. Go ahead and pin those things you like. Um, okay, I guess we're hearing problems and I do apologize. I'm in Atlanta. Um, I am to link on a wired line, so I apologize. Um, I think it's okay, Steve, that you were catching okay. m m a majority of everything you're saying. Uh, it just okay. pops in and out just briefly. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, hopefully, when we get Dale on talking about management, he'll be, uh, uh, but maybe Fargo's better. Um, the third thing is we do have search. so. From the desktop, we can swipe left or click in the lower right, or left to right on the right hand side, or click in the lower hand car. We have search there. Again, we can search for apps and easily pin those or, or, or manage those on my start screen or on my taskbar. Uh, number four is um, we have the ability with 8.1 and 8.1 update to make file types always with a desktop version of app. So if you've got um, HTML links, if you've got PDF documents, um, where your experience with the modern app maybe has not been as great as we would like, uh, for example, printing PDFs with the modern app uh, Adobe Reader, um, 
understand that we do have available now um, the ability to say if I open a PDF, use the default desktop program. And again, that's in the programs component of Control Panel. Last but not least, the, the fifth thing I like to show death of seven users is if they still live in that environment most of the time, if they're usually at a desk, um, then we also have the ability to, to manage how when we boot and log in, what we boot to. And we can, in fact, boot to desktop now. So main thing is when we brought out Windows 8, we didn't, pro we maybe uh, didn't do things that were super popular. I'll use the start button. And there is the, the long drawn out conversation of should we have had start, should we not have start, should we have kept no start. But wherever your, wherever your thoughts lie on that, we have the ability now um, to, to have that start natively in Windows 8.1 um, and move forward. The other thing I want to kind of keep everyone in mind about today, these, the devices, um, the devices that are available today are extremely powerful. Um, we were at a uh, customer not long ago, and they said, we have, we want to run Windows 7 on these devices, um, but we want the new hardware because it's more powerful. And this is where we have the conversation about Windows 8 in the back end, in the um, design from scratch is better than Windows 7. So we talk about how it's faster. We talk about overall performance better, being better, um, better battery life. And honestly, a wide range of devices that are just, um, I was at a government agency not too long ago and ran across a Windows Surface Pro that was um, doing something pretty darn amazing. Uh, this is an engineer. Uh, desk typically looks like. And here he is running a Surface Pro 2. Um, and along with its single monitor, he has somehow managed, and I've not got this figured out yet. I've only got three screens running right now. Um, but he has managed to have actually four screens plus the internal screen running. Um, and uh, awesome point, Tanya. <laughs> a PPI device would be fantastic. Um, hard to sit down and use, though. So. Really, the devices today with the i5 and i7 process, multiple hard drives, SSDs if needed, really have a, enough power, enough portability, and connectivity peripherals to really make it um, the right choice for a lot of users as we move forward. Last point um, before we get into management I want to talk about is uh, security and really um, continue to drive that Microsoft is no longer that company with the target on our back um, where we're seeing Windows exploits and we're seeing you know security breaches regularly in the Windows infrastructure and in the ecosystem. So a couple of things we're trying to do is focus on trustworthy hardware. I don't know if you've experienced or a red uh, boot screen for UEFI, um, but we have the ability to really make sure that all the components and devices in a machine um, are trusted, are known, all the drivers are good, and, and everything's needed. Before um, we're also focusing, continuing to focus on identity and access control. Um, so with the advances in the TPM chip, biometrics, uh, multi-factor authentication, that's always going to be a place we're going to continue to invest in Windows 8. Um, with BitLocker, we're looking at better ways and BitLocker to go. We're looking at great ways of protecting your information. and. Built into the operating system now, of course, um, are tools to natively um, avoid and, well, resist is the right word, resist malware. 
Um, so you still have the ability to run third-party tools if you have a preference or your customers do. But we do have a, with Security Essentials, um, right out of the box, we have a, a very robust, proven uh, anti-spyware, um, antivirus capability built into the box. Lastly, and as a transition, the other key area we're really focusing on is making sure that we have a unified management strategy um, across our platforms. And with that, um, I'm going to um, hand the uh, ball over and have Dean take it away, or Dale take it away. So Dale, the floor is yours. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Steve. That, that was great. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and show my screen here. One second. And we'll just give it a moment to, uh, to show up here. <clears throat> but uh, first off, I just want to thank you uh, for joining uh, us on the session this afternoon. Uh, so this is the management portion of, of our session. Uh, so my name is uh, Dale Sayers. I'm a partner technology strategist focusing on modern data center. And um, luckily uh, here in Fargo, it's uh, it's bright and sunny, so we uh, shouldn't have any issues as far as uh, uh, voice quality. Uh, but as far as uh, this this portion, we'll be talking about uh, System Center 2012 R2 and the integration with Windows Intune. Uh, there, there will be a focus on um, mobility, so we'll be looking at that. And, and towards the end, we'll also be covering uh, a new offering that we have uh, called the Enterprise Mobility Suite. But that's uh, that's on the that's that's the agenda this afternoon for this for this session. Um, <clears throat> but basically, we'll we'll cover kind of some uh, uh, some background here as far as uh, today's challenges. Uh, specifically around users, I guess going back a few years when we uh, when uh, didn't have uh, um, as many mobile users, people working from home, basically were protected or within the firewall. But uh, of course, today is that changed? That that's now changed. We have uh, remote year workers. We have we're working with different vendors, uh, different partners. Um, so that definitely uh, uh, introduces some challenges. And then uh, with that, we have a number of uh, devices that have been introduced in the environment. Um, I remember uh, uh, back a few years uh, when we first introduced, at least we had a choice as far as devices, and that was, uh, I think we had, uh, we offered a Trio. Uh, this is this is pre-Microsoft. Uh, we offered a Trio and a BlackBerry. Uh, so that that was that was our initial choice. But uh, of course now we have uh, not only you know different phone form phone form factors, but we also have tablets and, and other devices. So basically just an explosion in the number of devices. Um, so that's uh, definitely uh, uh, presenting a challenge. Uh, and historically, most or all these devices in the workplace were, were owned and therefore managed by, you know, by the company. So as far as you know, different policies, processes, they're all focused uh, on device management uh, and usually on a, a pretty small uh, tightly controlled and managed set of, uh, you know, corporate approved hardware. Um, and also they, you know, basically determine the replacement cycles for those, uh, for those um, different devices. Uh, so suddenly we're, we're uh, today we're, we're looking at uh, the kind of the consumer, excuse me, consumerization of IT. Uh, so that drastically changes this scenario. So there's a great number of uh, different devices out there today that we have to support. Um, and then also, as far as the devices, there's a, a number of applications that are running on those devices that we're uh, having to support. So suddenly, we're looking at uh, you know the application uh, lifecycle management uh, for all those those devices. So if we have uh, let's say a, a CRM um, that's needed uh, for let's say a Windows Phone, uh, you may also have to support. Uh, you know, a CRM, the same CRM app for um, for uh, for an iPhone or for you know for a different uh, uh, across different platforms. So uh, so that uh, uh, is also, I guess, another challenge that we're looking at. And of course, you know, for all those different applications, there's the data side of the uh, of the coin and having to manage and secure all that data. 
So this brings us to, uh, I guess, our, our solution, our, our focus uh, around uh, managing all those different silos, and that is uh, our, the people-centric IT approach, our PCIT. Um, so bringing the users, devices, apps, and data uh, all together and providing uh, you know, a unified management uh, solution. <clears throat> so as far as um, you know, specifically around users. So basically, we want to be able to uh, enable your end users by allowing, allowing users to work uh, basically on the devices of their choice. Uh, we also want to focus on uh, protecting the data and managing risk. And again, as far as the unifying your environment by uh, deliver, <laughs> excuse me, delivering a comprehensive application device management uh, for not only on-prem uh, infrastructure and devices, but also, of course, you know, your remote workers uh, off-prem. And then this is where uh, we're using our System Center Configuration Manager, uh, Windows Server, Active Directory, as, as well as some of our uh, different cloud-based solutions such as Windows Intune and Windows Azure to provide uh, that unified management across all these uh, four different silos. So as far as the, um, I guess, the two different solutions that we have for managing mobile devices today, uh, the first one is uh, System Center 2012 R2, uh, Configuration Manager with Windows Intune. Um, this basically enables uh, Configuration Manager to, uh, again, extend beyond on-prem uh, PC management to devices that, uh, that live in the cloud. Uh, so that includes your, your Androids, uh, that includes uh, iOS, Windows Phone devices, and still provide that, uh, that single pane of glass in terms of management. Uh, this uh, solution also provides um, rich policy management and reporting, and also we have that scalability. And of course, the, uh, the second solution that we have is using Windows Intune. Uh, so this can be used as a standalone, standalone uh, solution, and this is, uh, you know, provides web-based administration, uh, easy-to-use console, and, um, and really ideal as far as whenever you uh, are looking to, uh, uh, to provide any infrastructure on-prem. So these are our two options today. So there's basically three main focus areas that are addressed uh, with System Center Configuration uh, Manager R2. And that's uh, as far as enable users, and that's essentially allowing people to get access to their corporate applications and data. And that's also providing them with the tools to manage their own device. Uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the white feature, and also getting access to support across multiple, uh, multiple device platforms. Uh, as far as the uh, Unify infrastructure, uh, essentially with that, we want to bring together management in a common infrastructure. And that's whether it's for uh, on-prem uh, PCs uh, or virtual applications, uh, mobile devices. And then in terms of uh, as far as simplifying administration, and again, that uh, boils down to, to that single pane of glass view for, uh, for managing your, your infrastructure. So as far as, uh, I guess, to begin with enable users, uh, there's basically two different aspects to look at, uh, at this. Uh, one is around unified, unified device management. Uh, so as far as enabling the user, regardless of what device they're using, uh, it's providing the uh, compliance environment that helps, you know, again, manage and protect your, uh, your corporate data. Uh, as far as the user-centric application delivery, uh, with that, we're basically providing the user with the appropriate, appropriate application for the device they're using, whether it's a PC application uh, or a native application or even a virtual or, or web-based application. So in terms of uh, unified device management, uh, with the release of Service Pack 1 with System Center uh, Configuration Manager, we introduced the uh, ability to connect Configuration Manager to Windows Intune. And we'll actually take a look at that here in just a second. Um, and basically, with that, we're able to enable management of, of cloud-based mobile devices. Uh, and with our, our latest release, as far as R2, uh, we're, we'll continue to build on that, and that's basically allowing us to increase the management capabilities uh, and provide support for new platforms uh, such as uh, Windows 8.1. 
So uh, as far as the platform support, we've got basically three columns here. Uh, on the left column, we have the OS platform. Um, and then we have in the middle column the management agent that's used uh, to support that platform. And then on the right column is the end user uh, experience, uh, whether they're able to pull their apps from a company portal or whether we're using System Center or Intune to, uh, um, to provide that support. Uh, everything that you're, you're seeing that's highlighted uh, is new with uh, the latest version of System Center. So this is the System Center 2012 R2 Configuration Manager, uh, I guess, new items. And then as far as the um, uh, OMA DM, uh, that stands for uh, Open Mobile Device, or excuse me, Open Mobile Alliance uh, Device Management. And that's basically uh, designed for management of uh, mobile devices, such as mobile phones, PDAs, tablet computers. Um, and device management is also intended to support uh, uses in terms of provisioning, uh, device configuration, software upgrades, fault management. In the case, uh, of course, we have uh, on the other side of the coin as far as management, we have our configuration management, a configuration management, a management agent, <laughs> and then in terms of the Apple, uh, the MDM protocol, and Android, they have their MDM agent as well. So, <clears throat> so when a user wants to use their uh, own own device, this basically uh, immediately raises uh, requirements, uh, both from the user and also uh, from the IT department. Uh, so the user needs access to apps and data, and it can, it, uh, and IT needs to ensure that the information, the corporate information, uh, documents and and what for, um, and so forth, remain secure, and that the business continues to deliver it on a, uh, according to its compliance and um, regulatory requirements. So with uh, Windows uh, Server 2012 R2, we introduce a new concept known as device registration. Uh, so users can register their own, um, bring your own devices from a single, uh, for a single sign-on and access to corporate data using Workplace Join. And as part of this registration part process, a certificate is essentially installed on the device, and a new device object is created in Active Directory. Um, so this device object basically establishes a link between the user and their device, and also makes it uh, known to IT, uh, and allowing the device to be authenticated and that basically provides a seamless second uh, factor authentication. Um, and then in return for uh, registering their device, um, the user gains access to uh, different corporate resources. Um, and this basically, you know, those resources weren't uh, uh, available previously to uh, or outside of, of a non-domain uh, joined device. Uh, so essentially this allows the IT to publish access to different corporate resources. Um, we have uh, something new that came out with uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 known as the Web Application uh, Proxy, or WAP. Um, and that basically allows the, uh, uh, the, uh, the multi-factor authentication. Uh, and also, the, uh, some, I guess that's a new feature that we have through uh, Windows uh, Azure Active Directory as well. And then lastly, uh, users can also enroll in voice, uh, devices, which configures the device for uh, management with Windows Intune. Uh, the user can then use the company portal for uh, access to corporate applications, uh, data, and to be able to manage their own devices um, and also perform tasks such as uh, the remote wipe uh, in the event that uh, the device is lost, stolen, or replaced. So an important uh, concept, I guess, in managing uh, or bring your own device scenario is the ownership of the device. Uh, so System Center 2012 R2 uh, Configuration Manager also introduced the ability to uh, denote whether devices are corporate, corporate owned or personal devices. So if a device is personally owned, then the, uh, basically you have a, a limited set of inventory uh, is collected from the device to ensure that the uh, enterprise doesn't stray over privacy limits. Uh, if the device is corporate owned, then a complete inventory of the device is collected. Uh, also, the ownership can be used uh, as a condition for deployment of uh, compliance items or applications. Uh, so if you, if you want to deploy a specific set of policies uh, to corporate devices, uh, or if you want to uh, deny a particular application from a personal device, uh, we have uh, this new global condition that you can uh, enable to uh, 
uh, control that deployment based on uh, on that ownership flag. Hey, Dale. Yeah. Do you know is it possible to lock down a USB port on the device? Um, you know, I I'm pretty sure it is, um, but I I guess I'd have to follow up on that one. Okay. So uh, beginning with uh, System Center 2012 R2 Configuration Manager, um, optional extensions that introduce new capabilities to uh, manage mobile devices uh, you, using Windows Intune uh, is now available from the Configuration Manager console. And we'll get a, see a chance to see that here in a few minutes. Um, administrators, administrators can also enable the individual extensions to gain access to uh, these new capabilities. And you don't have to wait for the next service pack or, or major product release to introduce that functionality. Uh, so essentially, to, to use these new, these new extensions, um, you, uh, the first step is you have to install the Windows Intune Connector uh, site system role. Um, and of course, you have to have a Windows Intune subscription. And that, uh, that Windows Intune Connector is basically responsible for uh, contacting uh, Microsoft to download uh, the available the available extensions, and after the uh, uh, Intune, Windows Intune connector downloads uh, the different extensions, uh, the extensions are then available from the console, where you can select uh, one or more to enable uh, in your in your console. And then after you enable the extension, the uh, capabilities that it introduces uh, appear as regular options in Settings and Configuration Manager, alongside existing options and settings. Uh, one good example is after you enable um, something that was recently introduced as far as email profiles, uh, you'll find a new node named email profiles, and it'll show up under the uh, company resources access and the compliance settings. Um, so this, uh, this new option uh, enables you to uh, configure, deploy email prof <coughs> excuse me, profiles to uh, devices along with other uh, available profiles. Um, and basically, the, uh, the different extensions uh, in the end, just deliver different sets of functionality. And again, this was something that was just recently introduced. Uh, so starting, uh, actually, we're just starting yesterday. Uh, we started rolling out an update to Windows Intune that uh, will provide support for Windows Phone 8.1, uh, as well as support for um, the Samsung Galaxy devices, uh, supported with the, uh, the Knox platform. And that uh, Samsung Knox is basically just an Android-based uh, uh, solution that's designed to uh, enhance security uh, around the Android platform. Uh, for Windows 8.1, uh, there's an additional device configuration setting, uh, software installation or side loading enhancements. Uh, that's where you get the selective wipe support for um, uh, web application or authentication broker uh, enrollment, and also automatic uh, mobile device management certificate re renewal. Um, for uh, for the different uh, Samsung devices which support Knox, uh, we now support device configuration settings uh, directly through Knox, uh, as well as through Exchange Active Sync. Um, the configuration settings are, are the same today, uh, and we're working on uh, releasing uh, additional Knox standards uh, specific settings uh, at, a later, at a later date. Um, additionally, the updated uh, company portal apps for iOS and Android now enable people to use their devices to uh, remotely access their PCs. Uh, this, fe this feature is already available through the company portal for uh, Windows 8 R and RT and requires, again, that Windows Intune connected to a configuration manager environment. Um, the uh, Windows Intune Company Portal apps for iOS and an Android are uh, being updated in the App Store and uh, Google Play. And people having Windows Intune to manage these devices will be alerted to the updates in the same manner uh, any other app is updated in, in those, those different stores. Uh, so these updates will uh, continue to roll out um, beginning yesterday. And we're expecting that, uh, I guess, the um, to, to the uh, we're expecting the deployment to be complete by, uh, for all customers by around May 21st. Um, as far as new trial and, and paid subscriptions created after May 9th, uh, those will automatically have the new updates. And then uh, customers using um, um, 
Windows Intune with Configuration Manager should see these uh, new capabilities made uh, available through the uh, extensions for, for Windows Intune around mid-May. So just a, a quick update there. So as far as the different mobile device settings in Configuration Manager 2012 R2, uh, so here we support uh, VPN, Wi-Fi, certificates, uh, email profiles. We just touched on that. Um, but basically, we have uh, different columns, the Windows 8.1 PC and RT, Windows Phone 8.1, iOS and Android. Also, if you, uh, if you search uh, TechNet, you'll also find uh, uh, um, another table that uh, provides a little more information in terms of uh, mobile device settings uh, support for um, Configuration Manager 2012 R2, uh, Windows Intune, and then there's also um, another table that provides um, uh, feature support uh, whenever you combine both Configuration Manager 2012 and Windows Intune. So uh, a new capability of, of System Center 2012 R2 is the ability to configure corporate resource uh, access for devices. Um, so <clears throat> Uh, by setting things like VPN and Wi-Fi profiles to Configuration Manager, uh, the end user doesn't uh, have to worry about having to set them up themselves on the, on the different devices. And there's basically four areas that can be configured. One is the remote connection profiles, and that's basically the ability to expose uh, fully managed PCs through the company portal. Uh, this also enables users to open an RDP session to, the, to their corporate PC. Uh, the next one is uh, uh, certificate profiles, and basically the, uh, the uh, root certificates can be distributed to devices uh, to enable verif verification of certificates. Um, next one is VPN profiles, uh, so these can be, be can be, excuse me, these can be configured to enable the mobile device to be uh, easily uh, connect back to the corporate network network without having uh, the user to have to manage and set that up that up themselves, and then also Wi-Fi profiles. Uh, so these can be configured to enable the mobile device to attach to the corporate Wi-Fi environments, again, without the, the user having to configure that themselves. Um, and the last one around email profiles, and that's just basically allows the, uh, the user to um, uh, get quick access to uh, pre-configured enterprise email. And it also enables removal of the corporate email during a selective wipe. And this touches more on the uh, VPN profile management. Um, so of course, you know, we, we uh, support uh, uh, different uh, VPN solutions out there today, as well as uh, Microsoft's own VPN standards like uh, uh, PPTP, uh, L2TP, uh, Ike version 2. Um, uh, as far as the Wi-Fi certificate profiles, of course, we touched on that being able to push those down without having the user touch that piece. So as far as email profile management, and uh, again, this is, this is beginning with, uh, with R2, uh, we introduced the optional extensions that introduce new capabilities to managing mobile devices uh, using Win Windows Intune. So this basically allows administrators to enable individual extensions to gain uh, access to these new capabilities. Um, and uh, I think at this point, uh, um, I'm just going to jump into kind of the demo portion here. Let me just switch over. So what we have here is a System Center 2012 R2 configura Configuration Manager console. Uh, this is uh, uh, set up and, and running in, in Windows Azure. Uh, so this is my lab environment. Um, but uh, essentially, starts some of the different changes that you'll see, uh, especially around uh, the cloud services. Uh, again, with um, with Windows Server 2012 R2 Service Pack One, uh, we added the Windows Intune subscription. So this is essentially where you can add your um, your Windows Intune subscription. Um, if we look at the properties, are when you're actually uh, adding in the process of adding it, you're going to get uh, different options as far as adding support. Uh, for your different uh, platforms, such as Android, uh, iOS, Windows, uh, Windows Phone 8. 
Uh, you can also, uh, as far as the company portal, you can uh, personalize this to include contact information. Um, we also touched on the extensions for Windows Intune. Uh, so once I once I added my Windows Intune subscription, um, it took a little a few minutes, but after a little bit of time, uh, I was presented with the, the new uh, extensions that we touched on, and these are automatically pushed down. And as far as enabling these new uh, extensions, it's just a matter of right-clicking and choosing Enable. So we'll just go ahead and enable these real quick. And again, now that these uh, two extensions are enabled, uh, they're going to present uh, new configuration options within uh, the console itself. Um, so one thing that uh, you have to do in order to, after uh, adding your Windows into subscription, uh, you also have to go into sites and you have to enable uh, the Windows Intune connector. Uh, so I, I done, I've already done that. And once you've added the Windows Intune connector, uh, you'll see this new um, entry get added to your uh, console, and it's the manage.microsoft.com. So that is basically the second step after adding your Windows Intune subscription is going in here and adding the the uh, the Win to Windows Intune uh, connector support. Um, but I'm going to jump over to the assets compliance, and this is uh, something that uh, uh, that's new. So we're just going to go into compliance settings, configuration items, and then what I'll do is I'm going to create a new configuration item. So you've probably familiar with the screen already, but uh, I'm just going to type in, uh, let's see, I'll type something in there. But uh, I guess one item that's new is this mobile device option. So if you choose this mobile device option and choose next, you're going to uh, be able to enable, in terms of mobile device settings, uh, all these different settings groups. So we're just going to go ahead and enable them all. And at this point, you're going to see all these different options that you have in terms of uh, these different categories here. So in terms of uh, password, uh, we have a number of different settings here. In terms of uh, password, we have minimum length, pa password expiration, um, number of passwords remember. So kind of familiar with, uh, with those different options. Um, we also have password complexity, password quality. Um, so those are just some of the options that we have in terms of password. Uh, dropping down into uh, device settings, you know, here you can um, enable voice dialing, um, uh, multiplayer gaming, whether you want to enable, disable that. So you have a lot of control as far as, uh, you know, what, uh, what type of different features that uh, uh, they're able to use on their phones. Here we're looking at email uh, management, calendar synchronization, message formats, jumping down into the store. Uh, we can enable or disable the, uh, the store feature, whether a password's required. But you'll see that there's just a number of different options that, this, that you now have available to you as far as mobile device management. Enable cloud backup, photo synchronization. Um, as far as the uh, Windows RT VPN profile, we, we are able to uh, uh, to manage that uh, within, of uh, course, configuration manager. So there is another option for this. Uh, pink synchronization, as far as uh, how, how often they uh, they synchronize. Uh, uh, data. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to go ahead and let you know to, uh, what, uh, I guess, what options are now available. And of course, you know, once you have those set, uh, you can go ahead and get those uh, pushed down to your, your different devices that you're managing. So let's just uh, jump back to the presentation here. All right, so as far as work folders, um, so we, we do now include support for uh, pre-configuring pre the new Windows 8.1 and Windows Server 2012 R2 work folders feature. 
And basically, this allows admins to set up the user's uh, devices for work folder synchronization uh, easily and without uh, you know, any end user involvement. So this table here provides uh, kind of an overview as far as the uh, full and selective wipe support that we have around the different platforms. So Windows 8.1, Windows 8 RT, uh, of course, Windows Phone 8.1, iOS and Android. So this comes in handy um, uh, as far as, uh, especially as part of the, the process whenever uh, should an employee uh, leave, uh, you can uh, basically remove company data without wiping their phone, which is kind of a nice feature. I'm sure they would probably appreciate that too. And as far as uh, just kind of an overall uh, management recap, um, so how the device is registered or managed provides uh, a different level of capability. So as far as unregistered devices uh, that are not registered, um, basically not managed having a somewhat of a very limited set of management capabilities. Uh, as far as registered devices, uh, enabling device with uh, just going back to that work, workplace join provides some additional access control and auditing, uh, but still an unmanaged, untrusted device. And then whenever you have a um, uh, MDM or mobile device management enrolled device, uh, there are a number of additional management, management capabilities that, uh, uh, that are uh, basically enabled, ensuring that the device is uh, compliant, uh, also provides a better experience for the end user. And then as far as a fully managed uh, device, um, this provides, the, the, I guess, basically the, the deepest, um, more comprehensive level of, of management uh, with Configuration Manager. So with uh, System Center 2012 uh, Configuration Manager SP1, we introduced the uh, ability to manage, deploy and manage Windows 8 uh, applications. And these can run across both uh, traditional uh, x86 PCs as well as uh, Windows RT devices. And then the, uh, the Windows 8 applications can either be deployed through uh, Configuration Manager directly to the clients or uh, Configuration Manager can provide a link to the application if it resides in uh, the, the Windows Store. And then you can also create an app um, uh, criteria for uh, an application deployment. And uh, basically, this de determines the method of de uh, deliver de excuse me, delivery of an application. Uh, it may be that uh, on a certain device or network connection or uh, maybe some other attribute that you can choose to deploy uh, the full native app. Uh, but uh, with other devices, they'll basically just re receive a link to a virtual version of the application. Uh, so this is basically a, a great solution for ensuring that, uh, again, that corporate data doesn't uh, leave the data center for devices that are lightly managed or uh, less trusted. Uh, devices that are fully managed and trusted could receive the full application. Then around the, uh, the user-centric application delivery. So one of the key aspects uh, here is the end user experience. Um, so a new self-service portal is available that gives the uh, user a rich uh, modern company portal, uh, which allows access to all the applications that have been provisioned for the user. So as far as the, again, uh, bring all the infrastructure together, for, together as far as uh, you know, that single pane of management. So these are some of the different uh, areas that we'll touch on here. You know, as far as the reduced infrastructure requirements uh, with prior versions of Configuration Manager, uh, there were a number of reasons for, uh, for essentially expanding this hierarchy without additional uh, primary sites or secondary sites. So many of these uh, have basically, basically become obsolete. Uh, so listed at the bottom half of the table due to new functionality that came with, uh, I guess starting with Service Pack 1 and R2 releases of conf uh, Configuration Manager. Um, there's still a handful of reasons for expanding the hierarchy. Uh, and these are kind of uh, captured at the top half of the table. And the reduction in reasons means that uh, customers uh, with uh, existing uh, infrastructures that are built around some of the older versions can actually uh, now consolidate their, uh, uh, their infrastructure uh, if they move up to the latest version uh, being R2. 
uh, as far as consolidation and cross-platform uh, integration, um, so uh, overall organizations were, are, are able to cut down on the number of physical servers. Uh, and just some of the different areas of, uh, of opportunities there, uh, essentially co-locating the site system roles uh, onto a single server instead of spreading these across multiple servers. Uh, also eliminating, eliminating the servers required for uh, client security. Uh, as System Center 2012 Endpoint Protection integrates with Configuration Manager, um, we can also simplify the system architecture by reducing the number of primary and secondary sites uh, in the distribution points. Um, we also now support uh, configuring uh, dis excuse me, distribution points uh, as a cloud service in Windows Azure. And this basically enables, eliminates the plan to uh, uh, purchase, maintain the hardware for installing uh, the site system roles, uh, which also helps you know, drive down those infrastructure requirements and costs. So another key tenant as far as unifying the uh, infrastructure is bringing the mobile device management uh, into the client management infrastructure. So as far as connecting Configuration Manager to, to Windows Intune, there's uh, basically two steps that need to be configured out, and we kind of covered this uh, during the, uh, the demo. But basically, the first step, again, is just to uh, uh, configure that Windows Intune subscription. And the next thing is to deploy that Windows Intune connector. In terms of security and compliance, um, with uh, endpoint uh, protection uh, management capabilities. Um, so we, we uh, have that, uh, of course, you know, part of the system center suite. And through that single configuration manager console, uh, we can now deploy endpoint protection uh, and also easily track the, uh, the health and state of the endpoint clients. And then we also uh, uh, introduced uh, um, a new service release. And this, this came out, uh, at least started on, on April 23rd uh, with the Windows Intune Endpoint Protection Agent, or uh, WIEP. Uh, but basically, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft now provides regular releases as far as uh, anti-malware platform updates. And that uh, helps you know, guarantee the uh, consistency around protection, performance, robustness. Um, and also, um, again, providing that endpoint protection. Uh, I think that we're just at the point where we need to wrap up here. There's uh, just a, a couple things that I wanted to uh, uh, to cover here. Um, so the, we have a new uh, enterprise mobility suite. Um, as far as the new suite, it, uh, uh, it launches on, on May 1st. Um, so you probably heard about it or read about it in the news, but uh, essentially what we're doing there is we're, uh, along with Windows Intune, uh, we're also leveraging our Azure Active Directory Premium along with our Azure Rights Management to, to provide uh, this enterprise mobility suite. Um, and basically the, the three areas of benefits is uh, identity, um, identity management, mobile device management, and also data protection. Um, so I just want to make sure that uh, you guys are uh, all aware of that. But uh, I, I do apologize for, for running a few minutes over here. Um, there's uh, quite a bit of information to, uh, to cover in, in a short uh, span of time. But I uh, uh, certainly appreciate uh, everyone's uh, time this afternoon. Um, if you have any questions, uh, certainly feel free to, uh, uh, to let us know, and we'll, we'll get uh, your questions answered. Yeah, thanks, uh, Dale uh, and Steve. Uh, a lot of great content. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we will be posting this to our Yammer pages as well as YouTube channel. So uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll probably include that in my uh, new uh, newsletter that's going out here soon. Uh, you can always find uh, Dale. I, I posted his uh, blog uh, URL into the chat window, so you, you're welcome to read up uh, there. And uh, Steve also has a Yammer page, so I posted that in the chat window as well. So uh, please find us there. Again, uh, this was uh, the channel development team. Uh, we also have a Yammer page, and uh, hope you can uh, join us there as well. 
I believe most everybody has my contact information, so if you do need any questions answered, feel free to uh, send them my way, and I'll, I'll filter them over to Dale and Steve directly. Uh, thanks again for joining today, and uh, we'll uh, see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.